Oh, so <laughs> I know. Okay, so when we are feeling down, finding something to laugh about can literally change our whole outlook and make us feel better. When it comes to relieving stress, more giggles and guffaws like loud, heartly laugh, not just smile, are just what the doctors ordered. Why? How come? According to Mayo Clinic, whether you are guffering at a sitcom on television or quietly giggling at a newspaper cartoon, laughing does you good. Laughter is a great form of stress relief. International study of the Times of Israel found that even if you are faking it, smiling makes you feel happier. Israeli psychologists from the 19th century research group suggesting that even the smile muscles trigger happy feeling. Dr. Niv Regev, a psychologist uh, from Ben Gurion University in Israel, wrote that it is true that smiling makes you happier and you should smile even if you don't feel like. It's good for the muscles of the face, smiling. Now, a good sense of humor cannot cure all ailments or all diseases, but there are positive things that laughter can do, like soothing tension. Laughter is also good for you over long term. It may relieve pain, it may increase personal satisfaction, it can improve your mood. It can even improve your own sense of humor. When was the last time you had a really good laugh, each one of you? Just think about it. Not just a small chuckle or a controlled and proper ha ha on the telephone, but an all out, up loud, a, a snore including a, a high following belly laugh. When was it? Life can be serious sometimes. Bills, health, or family concerns, and a stressor from work don't exactly include or inspire roaring laughter. But just like exercise, laughter is amazingly good for your health. And more importantly, it is a decision, a personal decision. The Bible tells us, and now science confirmed it, a happy heart does good like medicine. Like in the, the, in the book of Tzfania, a thir, a chapter third, and I quote, sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem, and the Lord will take away your judgment and your enemy. Roni bat Zion, Hariu Israel, Simchi v'alzi b'chol lev bat Yerushalayim, v'Hashem yasir mishpatayim v'oyvayim. Kenneth Copeland. Who, uh, who is a priest, uh, recently sat down with the renowned uh, uh, neurosurgeon, uh, Dr. Avery Jackson, for a powerful discussion about the effects of laughter on the health of your spirit, your soul, and your body. Dr. J uh, Jackson shared uh, uh, how recent research proved that laughter in conjunction with exercise will repair your body far beyond anything else that you can do. And that God's prescription for health includes laughter. Dr. Jackson said, uh, yeah, God, excuse me, uh, yeah, God built mechanism to heal our imperfect earthly bodies and laughter is one of them. The good news is 
that everyone, each one of you included, can make a decision to laugh every day. And as you will do it, study shows, you will achieve these five surprising health benefits of laughter. A, uh, a number one, <clears throat> a, uh, a, a, uh, for your spirit, souls, and body. Number one, it relieves pain. Number two, it will help your heart by increasing the amount of oxygen in your blood and kicking up your, up rate, your heart rate. Number three, it will boost your immune system a, um, a, since it releases more anti-infection antibodies to help protect your body from infection. Number four, it will make you happier it helps uh, uh, lighten, uh, lighten your mood and lessen depression. Number five, it will reduce stress and make it easier to cope with challenging a uh, situation. Uh, so uh, we often find laughter uh, uh, in the most unexpected of places in tragedy. There has been an increasing amount of research uh, in recent years on humor uh, uh, as, as a coping mechanism for marginalizing a, uh, or a, uh, oppressed populations as well as communities beset by tragedy. For instance, researchers have, have uh, studied uh, the role of humor in the life uh, in the lives of holocaust survivors not only uh, in the year after the, the atrocities but also while they uh, while they were in camps themselves uh, in this remarkable uh, uh, excuse me in this remarkable reflection uh, uh, of the uh, uh, of the will to survive during the holocaust a, um, a, a Victor Frankel, I don't know if you heard the name of this guy, a, a, a wrote in his book, a Man's Search of Meaning, a, the, and he wrote in the book, humor a, a, was the sole weapon in the fight of self-preservation. -pre it is well known that, a, that humor, a, a, more than anything else, uh, in the human makeup can afford an aloofness and an ability to rise about any situation, even uh, if only for a few seconds. <clears throat> Just a second. The interesting thing is uh, that your laughter is not only helping you, you can help others with your laughter. A, uh, like tell a joke, laugh, and the world will just laugh with you. A, uh, I, I don't know if he's, if he's here, but I just want to mention if, uh, if anybody of you is a member of a, uh, the famous synagogue, a, uh, we have a guy there uh, that his name is Shai Baron. A, uh, and this guy, Whenever you talk to him, even two words, you're laughing. He just has a, such a such a spirit of a, and such jokes that it's it's just a pleasure to talk to him. And they, and this really it, it just makes your day nice, you know. And 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 interesting. Anyway, but so there are a few examples that I want to show you that they, uh, that they, uh, a joke and laugh really make other laughing with you. For instance, a mohel. A circumciser wanted to advertise himself. So he designed a flyer and he printed on it his name, his telephone number, and a picture of a watch. Someone asked him, a mohel and a watch? What is the connection? So we answered, you know what I'm doing, what a mohel is doing. So what did you want me to put on the picture? Okay, I'm happy you're laughing. <laughs> or another thing, a, a mother is walking with her baby and a friend passed by and said, the baby is so adorable. 
And she answered, this is nothing. You should see the picture. Uh, another example, uh, yeah, we are, uh, yeah, we are uh, used to eat on Rosh Hashanah uh, meal, machalei bracha, symbolic foods, uh, which, will, uh, yeah, which will be for blessing. Uh, one of them is pomegranate, Rimon. Why pomegranate? So, some, uh, so somebody asked the rabbi, why pomegranate? So some uh, rabbi said that there is in the, in the pomegranate 613 kernels, the number of the mitzvot. And the people asked the rabbi, 630 kernels? How do you know? So we saw, go count. And as a matter of fact, I thought, I happen to have a pomegranate here and I want to show, go count. Go count the, the kernels. <laughs> So of course, uh, yeah, of, uh, it's it's impossible, but uh, but that's what it is. Uh, yeah. Another example is when the COVID uh, pandemic started, and people were isolated in their home, and they did not come in or out. So a woman took off the mezuzah from her entrance door, and she put it on the refrigerator. Why? <laughs> Okay, so laughter is the best medicine. Now, what is the strength of the power of healing of laughing? We all know now that laughing is good for the soul and spirit. But did you know that laughing has a positive and important influence on our physical health? Laughing can prevent pain, to strengthen the heart and even protect you from sicknesses and diseases. Research found out that people who laugh often have to use much less pain medications after surgical operations than people who laugh seldom. Another research found out that people with diabetes uh, who use uh, to suffer from heart attacks, if they watch, uh, watched comedies even only half an hour a day, got less heart attacks. Watching a comedy strengthens the blood flowing in the body, uh, which, uh, which can prevent heart attack. Also, they found out that laughing uh, can improve the quality of sleeping. By the way, it is interesting to know that 10 or 15 minutes of laughing burned about 50 calories. So laughing is free of charge. Everybody can use it. It's completely natural, no side effects. So allow yourself to laugh more. Now, just a second, somehow I'm getting dry. Now, did you know uh, that there are many, uh, 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 many references to laughter in the Bible? Uh, uh, as a noun is tzchok. As a verb is litzchok. Yitzchak means, the name Yitzchak means will. Laugh. We eat shak machar. It's a it's a verb. Would you uh, would you believe that as the verb it's mentioned in the Torah, uh, the first time and the only time? Well, uh, yeah, in Genesis chapter seventeen five, when God changed Abraham's name into Abraham, and promised him that he will make him father of many nations, of Hamon Goyim and will establish a covenant, a brit, between him and Abraham's seed. Vahakimoti et briti, beini uveincha, uvein zaracha. And he promised them all, the all, uh, all the land of Canaan, forever. Venatati lecha ulezaracha, et kol eretz Canaan, laachuzat olam, forever. Abraham was then, 99 years old. He was talking about giving it to his, to his seeds. 
And uh, so then in verse 15, 16, uh, God changed Sarai's name also to Sarah and told Abraham that he, God, will give her Sarah a son for him and he will bless her and she will be also a mother of nations. ונתתי ממנה לך בן, והייתה שרה לגויים מלכי ימים ממנה יצאו. Hearing this, Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. In verse 17, ויפול אברהם על פניו ויצחק. Why did Abraham laugh? Wondering if being 80 and 100 years old and Sarah will be 19 years old, they will be able to have a child. It's very interesting, and nobody realized this, that in this promise, God is the one who told Abraham that he should name the child Yitzchak. As it's written in, in uh, uh, chapter uh, uh, Yud Zayn, uh, Sarah, uh, your wife shall have a son, and you shall call his name Yitzchak. Sarah is yoledet ben, this is even when Sarah did not know it, and Sarah did not laugh. It, it was all told to Abraham. Uh, so we know that uh, yeah, names have a very important meaning, especially in Hebrew. And so is the name Yitzchak, which means will laugh. It is a verb. Then God continued the promise in verse 21 that he will establish his government with Yitzchak, whom Sarah will give birth in this time next year. All these promises were between God and Abraham. And this time Sarah does not even know a thing about the fact that she's going to give birth to a son. Now, we know the story in chapter 18 when Abraham, a, uh, at the heart of the day, Yom, was sitting by his tent door and he, uh, and he saw the peop uh, three people, Anashim, approaching. He ran towards them and invited them to come, recline under the tree, drink some water, wash their feet, give something to eat, and then he told them, you can continue to wherever you want to go. But before they leave, he rushed to Sarah to prepare food for them. And actually, I want to tell you, by the way, that this, this little story is an example of Achnasat Orchim, of the right way to welcome guest, a guest. Hey, you, you, you let them rest, hey, yeah, wash your hands, have something to drink, hey, yeah, and then you can go. So this is really a very, a very nice uh, way to, uh, to welcome guests. The people asked him, where is Sarah, your wife? Uh, she is in the tent preparing food for you, Abraham said. And they told him at this time next year, Sarah will give you a son. Ka'et chaya ve'ine ben le'sara ishtecha. Sarah heard it as she was standing at the entrance of her tent. Of course, she did not believe that she will give birth a, uh, to a child at her age. And she laughed within. But it's hak Sarah bekirba. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so it's, it's different, it's chok bekirba, it's not like laughing out, you know? And then in about six verses, this verb and noun are repeating a few, uh, few times that uh, Abraham uh, 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 laughed and Sarah laughed and they did not laugh. And so it's, it's repeating a few times. And God asked Abraham, why did Sarah, why did uh, she laugh Sarah? Madua tzachaka Sarah? is written in verse 13. Is there anything I cannot do? If I told you, if God told you, I, you will be have a son. Is there anything I can do? Why, why did she laugh? And, uh, uh, and Sarah denied that she laughed. And she said, uh, but 
לא צחקתי. And God told, no, you did laugh. לא, כי צחקת. And they, uh, so in these few psukim, uh, there is uh, many times, you know, uh, about, uh, about tzchok, about, uh, 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 in, and this is the only time in the Torah uh, that it's really uh, long, uh, mentioned. And then after Tzara gave birth to a son from Abraham in chapter 21, and uh, Abraham called him Yitzchak, as God mentioned that this will be his name, Tzara said, God made laughter from me. Everyone that will hear it will laugh at me. Tzchok asa li elokim. Kol ha-shomea yitzchak li. Now, what is the difference between the laughing of Abraham and the laughing of Sarah? According to the Rambam, since Sarah laughing was within, but yitzchak bekirba, It was mockery. Her laugh was like a ridicule. It's not a real, a real laugh. A real laugh is from the mouth loud out. Indeed, Sarah's laugh was not a real one. Abraham's was. As I said, believe it or not, the story of Abraham and Sarah and Sarah's laughing is the only story in the Torah, in the five books of the Torah. Uh, that laughing as a verb is mentioned. But in the Bible, in the whole Tanakh, in the Bible, a, uh, <clears throat> a, uh, the word laughter, tzchok, is mentioned few times, mostly in positive reaction, connected with happiness. But I want uh, uh, to mention here that there are a, uh, a verbs, litzchok, and nouns, tzchok, from the same root, tzadik, chayet, kuf. They are not always connected with laughing. A, um, um, sometimes a, a people can react to a certain person, behavior, or a certain action, a, uh, or even if you see somebody and you don't like uh, his dressing, uh, it's the matzchik. In Hebrew we say, hu uh, it is funny. It's different, it's, a, uh, it's strange. Uh, so, we, um, <clears throat> so in this, uh, just a second. Uh, uh, so we, yes, uh, um, as I mentioned, yes, uh, uh, that, it's, uh, that uh, sometimes, uh, what did I want to do here? Uh, Uh, okay, so so different times, uh, yeah, yeah we, we, we use the same word as a matzchik, or in Hebrew, we, we even say as a tzichkuk. A, uh, it's kind of a laughing, which is a, uh, which is a, which is a, a amusing and a, uh, and a, I, managed here to, uh, oh, I see. Uh, um, uh, for instance, in Genesis 21, we read that, that Sarah saw the son of Hagar, Ishmael, having fun or playing around with her son, uh, which upset her. But the Sarah at Ben Hagar met Sachek in Yitzchak. A, uh, playing around uh, sexually or seducing, uh, and and she did not like it. Uh, what what uh, what she did what she did, and the same verb metzachek is used in the story of Lot also, a, um, a, in the Genesis 19 when Lot told his children uh, to leave Sodom because God is going to ruin it, a, uh, to destroy it. They did not believe him. And in a uh, and and a, uh, a, it it seems that like a uh, that like he's metzachek he metzachek or joking they did not believe him uh, or another one uh, similar to this is a um, uh, when there was a famine a in the land of Israel and the uh, Rivka and Itzchak uh, Itzchak and Rivka were in Gerar in Beersheba 
and it's Chak said about Rivka uh, that she is his sister because she was beautiful and he was afraid that the king of uh, the Philistine uh, will kill him and take uh, and take his beautiful wife. Uh, uh, so he said, she is my sister. But then the king looked from his window and he says, she will metzachek at his store. He see that they uh, that they are sporting, fooling around, they are uh, uh, enjoying each other. By Revene, it's Hak Metzachek at Rivka Ishto. So again, we see the same uh, uh, the same thing here. Uh, um, uh, so so we see it in a uh, in the same route, a uh, different uh, uh, in different way. Now there is another important confusion in the Bible between tzchok and tzchok, with sin, tzchok, which, uh, which are not the same. Tzchok with, with sin is not laughing, it's smiling, chuckling, giggling, uh, make fun, a uh, half laugh kind of. And these two verbs are switching and substituting each other in the Bible. Like as we read in Psalm 126 in verse one, when God will bring back the Israelites from Babel to Zion, Shivat Zion, when they will come back from Babel, we were like dreamers and our mouth was filled with laughter and song. Beshuv Hashem et Shivat Zion, hayinu kecholmim, ve'az yimale schok pinu ulshoneinu rina. Our tongue will sing and we will be like laughing. But still, from one side, the Bible see laugh, the jest, the mockering as a negative value. As we read in the first ayah, in the first verse of Psalm, happy is the man who did not join jokers or jesting. Ashreya ish, אשר לא הלך בעצת רשעים, ובמושב ליצים לא ישב, ליצים, like clowns. And uh, on the other hand, the Bible see happiness and laughter as positive value. As we read in the scroll of Esther, uh, 816, the Jews had light, gladness, and joy. ליהודים הייתה אורה ושמחה וששון ועיקר, and they were laughing and happy. There are a lot of a, uh, in the Bible verses about laughter found throughout the Bible because God wants us to be happy and to fill up with joy. Well, the title of this presentation is Laughter and Irony in Life and the Bible. So I discussed a little bit about laughter. Now something about irony. All of us have heard the word before. What is irony? Irony is a term given a, a, to the use of words and behavior convey a meaning that is the opposite of it literally meaning. It could mean sometimes sarcasm, mockery, cunning, cheek on something, cheat on something, deceiving, misleading, and more. One of the best examples of irony is found in the Bible in the book of Yonah. Yonah uh, was a prophet at the time of the sinful king Yeroboam. When the United Kingdom, United Kingdom was a, a, a Shaul, David, and Shlomo. And after this, uh, the United Kingdom were divided to Yehuda and Israel. So Yonai was a prophet a, uh, at the time of the king of Yeroboam when the United was divided uh, of Yehuda. So, and King Yeroboam was a very sinful guy, a sinful king. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, as we as we know, he was a um, uh, so so a uh, uh, so as we say, uh, the book of Yonah is a continuous a uh, uh, ironic statement. Yonah was an Israelite prophet who was sent by God 
to the city of Nineveh in Assyria, Ashur, who had conquered the Israelite many times in, uh, in battles. And they, uh, its people were very wicked and God decided to punish them. And he sent Yonah to punish them, to do it. Uh, very interesting that some commentators say that the king of Nineveh was an Egyptian, an Egyptian who knew the God of Israel and what he did to the Egyptian people. Uh, you know, the, the, the 10 plagues and the, uh, whatever he did to the, uh, and he know that they, uh, at, at the end, the Egyptians were very happy to get rid of the, of the Ibrim. Uh, uh, so the prophet Yonah was sent to punish uh, uh, the people in Inveh that were very wicked people. The prophet Yonah was not happy to do this, uh, this job. And they, uh, and uh, you know, uh, to, to go to Nineveh and they, uh, and and they, uh, to do this mission, and he tried to get away from it. Did he try to cheat God? God told him to do it, and he tried to find a way to get out of it. He didn't want to do it, so did he deceive God? Yona ignored the divine com command and God reason, and as far as he cares. And then in that people can do uh, the bad things, the wicked thing, and let them uh, uh, make each other miserable. Who cares? Uh, in in that, who cares about it? So what did he do? He went to Yafo, which is on the on the on the on the uh, shore of the Mediterranean, and he found there a ship uh, uh, that that they went to Tarshish. Tarshish. Aya uh, is completely on the other side of Nineveh. And I want to show you the map. And I hope you can see it clearly, Aya, uh, uh, the map. So Aya uh, Nineveh, here is Yafo. You can see here Yafo. Is it clear? Can you see it? Uh, here is Yafo. Here is Nineveh. And here is Tarshish in Spain. So he took the boat. He took the boat from, yeah, from Yafo uh, to go exactly to the other side that he should, that he should have go. He should have go to, the, uh, to, uh, uh, to Nineveh. And he went to Tarshish, that is in, uh, uh, that is in Spain, actually. <clears throat> Just a second. Uh, so, and I think that you uh, that you know the story, a, um, uh, a, um, and of course, a, uh, that you that you went uh, to, to this boat, and then uh, uh, and the people uh, uh, threw him in the in the uh, in the water, and the fish swallowed him, and they, uh, there is a whole story about it. A, uh, but at the end, a, uh, a, uh, he did not have a choice, and he got to Nineveh, and they. Uh, 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 the fish threw him out. And at the end, he got to Nineveh and did his job. But what is interesting, when he got to Nineveh with the bad people, the sinning people that God wants so much to, to punish them, after preaching them, only one day, the entire city of Nineveh repented and converted, including their king. Uh, which, as I say, uh, um, as I mentioned, people think he was an Egyptian. So one day that he was that he was talking to them, and he told them that, that they are bad and they should. Uh, so they repented and and converted. This is ironic. Everyone knew, actually, the secret plane of they say, um, uh, 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 so to speak, uh, uh, that it had been revealed to the Jews. They knew what God's plan was when, when, when he sent Yonah, because it's written very clear uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the, first, uh, 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 the first verse of the book of Yonah, that God told, told him, Kum lech el ninveh Go to Nineveh, the great city, and tell them that I know about their wickedness and I have to, to punish them. Well, uh, it's really, really interesting. 
uh, uh, thing that there is there. The irony is about, uh, is, is, is found in what he did not say, not in what he said, uh, yeah, which is the sinner of, of, of Yerovam. Yonah could not convert his own people, Yerovam that I said that was a very sinning uh, 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 king. His own people he could not convert, but he could convert their enemy by his preaching. Now, why do we need, why do we read the book of Yonah on Yom Kippur? On Yom Kippur, we read the book of Yonah because repentance and forgiveness is the major theme, uh, theme uh, of this holy day. And God's com uh, uh, compassion, even for the potential enemies of Israel, is an important lesson for us. The repentant of the people of Nineveh, who were very wicked, that's a lesson for us. And the grace of the king, the, uh, the kindness of the seamen in the boat when, when Yonah was a book. And, and so it's very, it's very interesting that each one of the people of Nineveh repent. Each one of them, of the whole city, Aira Gdola, Nineveh, and each one of them repented. So uh, 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 the purpose of all of this is a story of Yonah, is to teach Yonah and us a lesson. When a choice has to be made between a personal and a national or tribal, the story, to choose, uh, uh, the story chooses the personal. This is why the book of Yonah is read on Yom Kippur. Although the most, uh, most of the Jewish holidays have national sources, history and meaning, the real meaning of Yom Kippur is humanly personal, individual. Yom Kippur is about the sole examination of oneself, separated from a religion or ethnic attribution. The individual on Yom Kippur, the individual is judged by its own action. So I want you to pay attention to this. Even though when we are davening, you know, a, um, um, a, and we ask forgiveness from God on Yom Kippur, you all know, you say, we say it in plural way. Slach lanu avinu chaytanu, anchet shechatanu lefanecha. It's in plural verb, but we still beat our own heart when we say it. Slach lanu avinu kechatanu. So even though we are talking about a plural, it's a personal thing, and the, the personal, the, the, each person is judged on Yom Kippur for his actions for his action. Now, another example of ironic uh, 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 in the Bible uh, is in uh, uh, the first book of Melachim of King, when the prophet Elijah spoke to, our, uh, to uh, Ahav, the mean and sinner king who worshiped the Baal and convinced the people to worship the Baal. The Baal was there, of course, the, the pestle of, uh, of the, of the non-Jewish people. Eliyahu gathered the people to Mount Carmel, Carmel, which is near Haifa, and told them, if God is your king, follow him. And if the Baal is the king, follow him. Im Hashem ha'elokim, lechu acharav. Ve'im ha'baal, lechu acharav. And this is the ironic way he explained to them. And I quote, at noon, Elijah mocked them. As, as I say, it's mocking, it's a, uh, and said, shout louder when you're talking to the Baal. Surely he's, he's your God. So perhaps he's sleeping. And, uh, maybe he's busy. Maybe he's traveling or maybe he's sleeping. So shout louder and they uh, wake him up. He's mocked by him, Eliyahu. Vayomar, kiru bekol gadol. Maybe he's sleeping, so he will get up. Irony in the Bible is not only expressed by people being a, a, by using words or behavior, 
but also by taking advantage of certain situation. For instance, and I want you to pay attention to this, it's, you all know the stories. We see many times in the Bible that people took advantage of darkness. Like after God destroyed completely Sodom, and Lot and his two daughters managed to escape and survive, they were worried that they will not be more future for their family. And they decided that at night, when it's dark, when Lot will not realize, they gave him to drink wine and they lay with him. They did it on two nights, the two daughters, each daughter one night. The result of this was the people of Moab and the people of Ammon in Genesis 19. Another example, when Yitzhak was old and could not see well, he sent his son, his, his older son, Esav, to hunt a co and cook for him a nice meal. And then he will bless him before he is going to die. Rivka, his wife, you know all the story, heard it and it was a, she, a, she was and convinced uh, that a, uh, her, her younger son, Yaakov, to help her per, uh, prepare a good meal for his father and will get the blessing that he wanted to give to a son uh, uh, in uh, Genesis 27. Uh, so that's what he did. And you may you remember that when it's hot, uh, when he, and and, uh, and then they, uh, it's hot came uh, to the uh, and gave him the meal, and uh, it's hot. You know, Yaakov came and gave the meal, and uh, Yaakov uh, and he said, "A call, call Yaakov, ve'ayadaim yaday Esav." The voice is like Yaakov. I think I hear Yaakov talking, but you look like you are like, like you are, but your hands are. Because Sarah put on him the, the a coat of a uh, you know uh, that, that it will be like a uh, like a, like the hand of a sub. Well, a, um, a, another example is the story when Yaakov who met Rachel at the well uh, with her flock, and he liked her. He worked seven years for her and got her, but in the morning, when it was light. Oops, it was not Rachel, it was Leah. Because Lavan said, we don't give the older one, the younger one before the older one. So it, uh, when it was dark, he did not see it, and it was, and it was Leah. Uh, so of course, uh, um, uh, uh, we know uh, Yaakov had to work another seven years and, uh, uh, and get the woman that he loved. Uh, and he married both of them, uh, Leah and Rachel. So to conclude, as we understand the power and the health of the body and the soul of laughing, smiling, and the irony in laugh and in life and in the Bible, and the joy and the happiness it brings, so uh, we will see the importance uh, of incorporating laughter in our daily life. So, Please find something funny to laugh about today and every day. Don't wait for it to happen to you accidentally. Just keep laughing. Thank you. Norman. Thank you. If there's any questions, can you put it into the chat room now? And I'll repeat the question to uh, Rahama. They can put up their hand if they want. Or you can put up your hand by going into reactions. If you go to reactions at the bottom of the screen, you can put your hand up. It's not a question, but it's a comment. We have a, uh, a newspaper here, a paper, a Jewish paper that comes out every week. It's called the Jewish Views. 
And I wanted to show you this. Where is Something, it? Where, where are you from? Uh, I'm in Brooklyn. Oh, in Brooklyn. I'm in Brooklyn, okay. but you know, it covers the, the area here and into Long Island. And I oh, brought this to the, uh, to the class. They started doing this every week. I have to tell you, they've got some great funnies here. And what I do is I take a picture of it and I send it to friends who don't get this. And with the caption, we need to laugh. Absolutely, it's wonderful. And I, and see, I love is, the, the two pictures on the two sides of laughing. Laughter and inspiration. Very good. And as it's written, it's the best medication. That's what yes. I said at the beginning. Yes, absolutely. That's very good. Yeah. Rahama, we have a comment from Sharon Gezit. And it's not a question, but she just wants to thank you for a great presentation. Okay. Who is what who was it? Sharon. Sharon Gezit. Oh, okay. <laughs> very good. I'm going to go. I hope you learned something from it. That yes. You keep laughing. I hope it's in, you found out that it's really yes. important not to, to the to the body, to the soul, to the to to everything. That it's it's important. Yes, absolutely. And you know what else, Ruhama? Uh, one day a few months ago, I introduced the class, our morning class, to my uh, grandson. He was only like a few months older. Well, now he's crawling and he's getting ready to walk. He's walking, holding on to everything. Do you know how much joy that brings when I, I babysit? And part of that is, is laughing with him, playing with him. When he leaves, I feel totally different. So I called my son and I said, I'm, I think I'm going to do it twice a week in the wintertime. Wonderful. Instead of once a week. The other Very grandmother good. gets him. And I get him like this, the both bubbies help out. But I noticed the difference from when he's here, the, the few hours, you know, what, whatever, and when he leaves. Absolutely. Very important. Yes. I, I, I mentioned yes. that even that even in the camps in the Holocaust, you know, that's what was holding them. You have to find something. Otherwise, how can you live in such a situation in the in the camps, in the in the Shoah, you know? So, so laughing is really, uh, oh, is it? oh, is it? It is uh, my friend from London. Okay. I have a question. Hi, Ruhama. Uh, it was fabulous. I really, I love all your presentations. I'm hooked on them. And I just want to comment that uh, you made me think because in Yiddish, I think it was Susan that said that she speaks Yiddish, Yiddish. fluently. Yes. I don't speak, I used to speak Yiddish fluently. I'm not using it enough. But uh, Yid in Yiddish, jokes in Yiddish did exactly what your topic says. It, it connected humor and irony together. Absolutely. Here is an example. I am not a good joke teller, so I'm going to just say it and you, you don't have to laugh. In Yiddish, we have this joke. Los vaxen wie zibale, mit dem Kopf und dreht und der <laughs> you know, so yeah, it is yeah. a complete. It's funny, but it is an irony as well. I'll tell you, in any love, in any subject, in any language, it's okay. You know, <laughs> as long as you, you know, you laugh with, with your with your mouth with loud laugh. You don't need any language. You know. <laughs> oh my very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Um, I think Francesca David is trying to ask a question. It's a comment. It's a comment actually. Uh, Sholem Aleichem said, uh, "Lachen is gesint. Doktorem hasten lachen." Which is very true. Which is very true. And um, I know I know Yiddish very well. And there there are so many words. Like somebody says, "How do you say a you know a smash on your face?" In Yiddish, you have a patch, a bo, a clam. <laughs> so many Ooh. words. Ooh. For one, for so, one, so it for one shows thing. us that it doesn't matter in what language. It's laughing uh, is good in yes. any language. <laughs> but I want to thank you for, amongst every other thing, about the lesson about uh, the Yonaha Navi. I didn't realize that you, during Yom Kippur, we read Yonah 
for this reason that you should explain. Yes. Yes. So if I get out something from the, the lecture, the interesting lecture, this is one very important issue yes. that I, yes. I will take with me. Thank That's you. Very, very good, very good. If I, you know what, for me, when I give lectures, if somebody learned one thing, I feel good. This is my price. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Uh, I think that they, um, I cannot read it, but they, uh, Rachel, fine. Did you say something? Might not. Rachel? Uh, Rachel, she, she's muted. No, no, I will okay. unmute. Oh, there she is. No, I just uh, said that it was an excellent presentation. And the more we laugh, the better it is Absolutely. For, Absolutely. for our soul and for our body. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. True. Shmuel, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Twice today we see each other. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, I, I really, I, it's really practical. I want you to take what it, with you, uh, this thing, and, and really use it. Laugh, laugh a lot as much as you can. <laughs> it's healthy for the, for the mind, for the soul, for the body, uh, for everything. It's, it's, yeah. very, it's very important. It's not just words. So Correct. it's okay. also good for this uh, for the plastic surgeons. It causes yes. wrinkles. Exactly. And then you have to <laughs> That's what I said for the muscles. Yes, it's very good for it's exercise for the muscles. <laughs> yeah, and the surgeons like it. Alan, there, hi. Hi, hi. There is now you join us? Laugh Yoga. Are you oh, familiar Margie's with Laugh Yoga as well? Hi, Margie. I'm not familiar with that. Laugh yoga is where you, you yeah. get into a room with people and there's somebody who facilitates it yeah, and we... you just start laughing. You make yourself laugh. It's artificial. But after a while, real laughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, you and... know, you think this is crazy. It's never going to work. It works tremendously. It's great. Yeah. Never heard of it. Interesting. Yeah. Laugh yoga. Mm -hmm. And you know what? And there's another thing now that I think about it. People who have pets, especially when the pets are puppies, when mm. they're young, they're comical. They make them laugh. Yeah. Also, uh. having a pet, it's soothing, but you also laugh. I know my daughter has uh, two cats now. And yeah. when they were kittens, she used to send us videos of the funniest things that they used to do. Yeah, it's so true. Having a pet also when it's younger, obviously. When it gets older, it starts to quiet down a little. So, so it's, it's really important. I take it as a, as a suggestion, really, to, to, find a, to find a reason to laugh. And they are, it's good for you. That's it. It's good yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. okay. <laughs> uh, Ruhama, we have some comments in the chat area uh, from uh, oh, Perl Grundland. Uh, yes, let me, no, skip. Uh, Margie Rick, thank you, Rakama. Oh. Shaper, thank you. You're welcome. Rakama. Oh, there's Margie. Hi. Hi, yeah. Hi. 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 Thank you very much. Where are you? <laughs> uh, Rukhama, we have a comment from Ziana Rubin, and she said, From whom? I cannot hear. I, your, your mouth is covered. <laughs> oh, yes. So we, have, we have a comment from Ziana Rubin, who says, oh. Wonderful lecture, Rukhama. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that you took out something from this. <laughs> that you took yes, out. yes. Yeah. So well done. Thank you. So Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, Shmuel, I moved out of the kitchen. I, <laughs> I, I see that. Room. <laughs> we don't recognize you now. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. You're right. Shabbat shalom. I'm out of here. Shabbat shalom, <laughs> everybody. Bye Hello. bye. Hello. And Hak Hanukkah Sameach. Oh, yes. Hanukkah Sameach. And find the reason to laugh. See you soon, Rohala. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, Thank Anna. you. Bye bye. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Before everybody leaves, uh, allow me to 
give my formal remarks to my friend, Ruhama. Uh, my name is Norman Zinman, and I'm very privileged to be on the same committee with Rokhama. We meet every month, and we plan programs like this. And uh, uh, I think we have a great committee, and one of the reasons why we have a great committee, we are seeing her face right now. Rokhama Mitsuyan, once again, Rokhama Danto has presented her chosen topic of laughter and agony in life and in the Bible in a very unique, fastidious and humorous fashion. Rahama, as usual, is very attentive to and concerned about accuracy and detail. She has presented her topic in an exacting manner. Her meticulous and arduous efforts have clearly illuminated why laughter is important in life, in general, and in the Bible. Rahama obviously is very familiar with the Bible. This familiarity has further enlightened us. Irony is the expression of one's meaning by using language that normally signifies the opposite, typically for humorous and emphatic effect. Rokhama certainly has captured this literal, this literally true both in life and in the Bible. The, the continuous education committee of Beth Emma is grateful to have Rokhama as an active participant. As we conclude, Tonight's presentation, I remind everyone to look at the great program being authored by Beth Emmet, Beth Yehuda, and an early Haksamer to everyone as we anticipate Hanukkah. Thank you, Rahama. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thank you hi to everybody. Haksamer. Haksamer and Shabbat Shalom. And uh, yeah, I will say hi to my David there also. <laughs> hi, David. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, okay. Mom. Thank you very much. That was that was great. Okay, um, David. <laughs> thank you very much. And I will say, I will ask this question. Yes. Uh, why do chicken coops have two doors? What is this? <laughs> I don't know, but I love I love the question. <laughs> because if because if they had four doors, they'd be chicken sedans. <laughs> oh. Chicken sit dance. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that was fun. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good, Thank you. Good night, everyone. Fuck some ass.